Well, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Justin Arm. I'm back with another Cakewalk by Band Lab tutorial. I hope you've been enjoying your day, your night, wherever you may be in the world. Thank you for tuning in. If you have already watched my Getting Started Cakewalk by Band Lab, here is the next step. I want to focus on the instruments that are built within Cakewalk by Band Lab, specifically the studio instrument suite that comes with Cakewalk by Band Lab. So if you are new to the software and maybe you're trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I go about producing a beat or making a song using the instruments that are within the actual software, then this video is definitely for you. Stay tuned. And let's get right into it. All right, let's get into it. So you have opened up Cakewalk by Band Lab by this point in time. Hopefully you're familiar with being able to install the software and understand how to create a new project or open a previous project that you've been working on. So I'm going to create a brand new project and I'm going to go to empty project. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new track. Now you can do this a few different ways. Uh, you can press control T to create a new audio track, but what I'm specifically looking for is to create a soft scent or instrument track. So I can right click on my little blank space here and I can go to insert instruments and I'm going to go up to SI drum kit and I'm going to press record enable. And I, this time normally I use my virtual controller, but I actually have my Nectar impact LX 25 uh, hooked up. I bought this a few years ago. It's a small, you know, MIDI keyboard controller. Uh, I'll put the link for the description below if you're interested in that. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of the rest of this stuff. I'm just going to record a simple beat. Uh, so let's press create. All right. So here it is. And it didn't pop up. Sometimes it normally pops up, but sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't pop up automatically, just double click on the little instrument symbol and it will pop up. All right. Um, let me put my headphones on so I can actually hear it because I am in my house with my kids and my family and you know how that goes. I'm trying to do stuff quietly and hope it's quiet in the room. Hopefully you don't hear a lot of background noise, but all right. So, um, all right. So we got some sound. Hopefully you can hear everything. I'm just trying to find out where it is on this keyboard. Okay. All right. So the cool thing about this SI drum kit is first of all, you have all of these drums that are right here. Now I can change the pitch for each one. Say if I want to do the snare, I'm going to highlight it. And maybe I, first of all, I want it pan center. So if you just double click, that'll pan it back center. And maybe I want it a little higher. Okay, or maybe I want it lower. Okay, it just depends on what sound you're going for. Um, double click it and go back center. I'm gonna raise this just a little bit. And maybe I'm cool with those times. The symbols, I can raise the pitch on them if I want to, but I'm fine with it. I might raise this hi-hat up some. So I'm gonna go to the tune of the hi-hat and raise it up. Okay. Now, if I am happy with this particular kit, then I can go ahead and record it. But you may decide that, hey, you recorded it first and now you don't really like the way that drum kit sounds. That's the great thing about being able to record MIDI because MIDI is data. Well, there's audio data and there's MIDI data, but MIDI is like just straight data, zeros and ones for the most part. And what you can do is it allows you to manipulate it, you know, throughout. So I can change the sounds, you know, if I want it to be a piano instead of drum kit, I can do that. Uh, but I can record the data first and then I can go back and change it. If you want to change the drum kits, there is a part up here. It says program, default program. And right now it's on the aggressive kit. Uh, I can go down. Let's say I want to try to find wood, double click on it. It loads it. 
And now I can exit out of that. And you can tell that the sound is different. Okay, it is touch sensitive. So the louder you play on the keyboard, okay, the louder it gets, which is realistic. Um, when you're trying to create drum parts, you want to make sure that it sounds more similar to what a actual drummer would be playing. And that is everything is not going to sound at the same velocity. There is going to be some beats that are lower. Uh, we call these ghost notes and drums where you may hardly hear the drum beat or the snare drum part or the hi-hat part. Uh, then there's parts that are accented. So ghost notes, accents, and our normal notes, our regular notes. If you want to change the kit again, you can do that. Uh, if you want to play a little sample of what the kit sounds like, you can press play here. Um, I got it on loop. And what you can do is you can click on these different type of patterns. Uh, let's say, let's do this swing hop. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we got in here. <laughs> booty. Let's see what booty sound like. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to do something with that pattern. Now I'm not one to normally do this type of stuff because I like to create my own beats. But if I wanted to do something real quick and I'm trying to get some inspiration, then I definitely can take this, this booty. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so funny. Anyway, but this booty, and I can just drag it uh, right there, and I can move this over. So now it's written data-wise here. Okay. So I can use that, and then I can keep looping that, or I can copy and paste it if I want to. But I am not going to do that because I... That sounds good, but I'm going to make my own pattern because once you get in here and you start creating everything yourself, um, you know, it's going to be a lot better because then you get more familiar with it. But if you're just new and you, you're not really familiar with creating drum parts or creating piano parts or anything like that, then you might want to come in here and use some of these samples. Uh, they're uh, completely free to use. Uh, there's some jazz or some swinger in here. There's some soul and funk grooves. So... I'm gonna change kits again, and I think I wanna use, let's see what this one sounds like. Okay, so I'm gonna use this kit right here called Hip Hop Heavy. All right, and I can change, I can take the reverb off of it if I don't want to, I just wanna completely dry. I can add reverb, okay. Okay, you might not wanna add any reverb now. You can always add reverb separately uh, the compression wise, so that's no compression on. Okay, of course, the compression is actually gonna, it's gonna make it more powerful. It's gonna boost the volume too as well. So, and you might not want it, but I think I'm gonna use that. Okay, so now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go up here and I wanna change my tempo. So I can click up there right here in the control bar near play and record, and I can uh, make sure I have my numerical lock on my keyboard. And then I'm going to put in 85 and press enter. And now my tempo should be at 85. And I can check it by just playing. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, I've got to set the metronome to, to be on while I'm in playback as well as when I record. Um, if you want to do a like a one bar uh, count off, you can do that. Click on metronome settings. And you can do record count in for one measure. Just add a plus sign or click the plus sign. And there you go. Press apply. And now I know that it's going to give me a four beat prep. Okay, I'm just figuring out what I want to play. I'm just coming up with something simple. But this time it's going to come up with some type of cool groove, some groove. Two, three. Okay. 
All right, so um, now I know I went over a little bit. Uh, you can, cool things, you can do a roll off, a roll, not roll off, but you can roll back. Um, I know that I didn't want to, I stopped at the ninth beat and I didn't want to stop at the ninth beat. I wanted to stop right before it. As always, when you create a new project, definitely press control S and I'm going to save it. I'm going to say this is test S I instruments. Uh, yeah, I'll just call it that. So, oops, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, hold on. Do it again. Okay, maybe I didn't did, I didn't do something correct. It happens sometimes. It's okay. It is saved now. I can tell it's got it named at the top, which is awesome. Now, um, let's go ahead and let's say let me listen to that real quick to see what it sounds like. Okay, and I can tell that it's kind of off a little bit. Um, if I wanted to keep it off, that's fine. I can do that. But I did for this sake, I wanted to be more quantized. So if you press Q on the keyboard. Uh, okay. okay. Yes. All right. If you, how, first of all, all right. I know that it's off a little bit. And I definitely want it to be a little bit more in time with my beat. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to press Q on the keyboard and it's going to bring up to quantize. Now I know so first of all, you got to figure out what type of count that you're at. And if you're not familiar with using a quantize, definitely check out my quantize video um, on Freak Hakewalk Band Live, which I really go really in depth into using Quantize. Um, so let's say I'm going to try, uh, let's try 16th triplet. Let's see what that sounds like. I can audition it first. Okay, so I know that's not right, but all right, let's try 16th. Okay, so I think that's fine. And then let's listen to it. Okay. And I see there's a few parts that I messed up on. Uh, but you know what? For the sake of the video, I might leave it there or I can show you quickly how to fix it. Let me show you how to fix it. Uh, let me go. So I like to do is I'll go to either the staff view or the piano view. But in this case, I'm going to staff view and I'm going to look at that track. Let's go back and look at it real quick. So I'm scroll back at the bottom. Um, you can't see me scrolling, but you can scroll back to the top. And I know that, to, that if you're new to recording notation, that this may be like uh, an equation or rocket science to you, but I know what I need to hear and I know where I messed up at. So, but I'm gonna listen to it again while I'm looking at the notes and the hi-hats are at the top, bass drums at the bottom. Snare is like in the middle. Okay, so I know there's a mishap right here. Okay, so this should be. T -t -t -t. So I want to do is I want to bring one of these over. That's on 720, and this one is on 720. I'm gonna bring this over to beat three. So I'm gonna put three, and I'm gonna go zero 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 zero. Now I could do another way. I could have slid. You know, went to like um like the step sequencer and I could have dragged this over to where I wanted it at if I wanted to do it that way too as well. I just like the notation better because I'm used to reading music. So, but uh, to each his own. Okay. 
and then I notice right here this should be t -t -t so that should be uh, one of these should be 720 okay so I'm going through this real quick because I know um, so the rule of thumb if you're dealing with quantization is that if you're dealing with 16th notes uh, the timestamp is going to fall on 0, 240, 480, 720, and then 0. Those are your 16th notes. So if you remember that, um, then you can tell, okay, well, should it be on the first 16th note? Should it be on the second 16th? Or should it be on the third 16th note? Um, okay, yeah, I know this is... Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Yeah, and I don't like that. So this came in on a on an E, and I wanted to come in on the and. So I'm gonna put it 480, I think. Yeah. Okay, and then I don't want this beat, so I'm just gonna put. Zero. Get rid of. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna press Control S to save that, and I can exit out of that view. All right, so I got this beat, and I'm just gonna do straight eight bars for now. All right, the next instrument that we are going to add is the. Let's do the bass guitar. Si bass guitar sound instrument sound instrument. Studio instrument, bass guitar. I don't know why I keep wanting to say sound instrument. Uh, SI bass guitar. Okay. So let's create a track for that. Uh, once again, it didn't pop up. Sometimes it pops up, but it didn't this time. Um, all right. This is a real cool bass. Um, I've used it quite a bit. A uh, few things that you can do on this is, of course, you can change the tune of it. Uh, right now I set to 440. So, but if I wanted to change the tuning, I can definitely do that. Uh, I can set it to slide. Okay, so I can slide, slide certain notes, but it doesn't it doesn't work unless I have the monophonic on. So when the monophonic is on, okay, and it just adjusts the the latency with the slide. See how it slides very slowly, but if I but if I speed it up, see if I take it down to zero, it just changes automatically. So Okay. So it just depends on how fast you want it to slide. Uh like I said, you want it monophonic, so you can get that. I always like that little slide. You know, like the mini move. Okay, and you might not want no slides, so maybe you want to turn it off. Okay, so now slides better, but then you might not want the monophonic on. Maybe you just want polyphonic. Okay, all right. Uh, pickup wise, you can change the pickup from the top pickup to the bottom pickup. Rounder sound, I can go rounder sound. I can go, I can add more bass. Okay, I can take some bass out, depending on what sound I'm going for. I can change the pan, I can change the volume, I can add some mids, uh, I can do it like a drive. If you wanted to do that drive wise, that'd be great. Uh, you can add compression. I mean, look how long that sustain is. Okay, so it gives you great sustain for this particular instrument, um, but I'm not going to put no compression on it right now. Same thing, you can go back here and you can change the patches. Uh, let's say I want to use a power synth. Okay. Um, okay. 
Okay, I can use transpose. I can uh, press an octave shift on my keyboard. Okay, all right. But I'm gonna go back down to a little octave. All right, so I think I'm gonna use this power synth. I like the way it sounds. Um, so let's see. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna play yet though, but <laughs> this is all on the spot, you all. This is all on the spot. Sometimes this is how it is. You just sit down and something comes to you. put this on loop if I want to <clears throat> uh, press the loop button up here uh, you can just drag it out to what I need it so drag it out to nine then that way it'll keep playing Stay in F. I'm saying, so say we like F major, I guess. Um, so let's do my count and let's start. I like that. I'm gonna turn the volume down for the sake of this. It's stupid loud. And I'm not going to quantize that for the sake of it, because sometimes when you're dealing with the bass part, uh, some of those lines like that very last run, you know, that look kind of bluesy line. Um, I might not want to lose that. So and if I did quantize, maybe I'll just quantize just certain sections so I can quantize just this part. Um, let's turn my loop off for a second and then let's, maybe I'll do that. So let's do, and I'll just quantize that part, press Q, and 16 is fine. Let's see. And that's cool for that. Um, and now I've done uh, my bass sound and I'm gonna go to the last instrument. Press Control S to save it. Don't forget to save your your uh, information. Definitely, because uh, you'll lose projects real quick and fast. <laughs> Hate to lose anything that you've been working hard on. Uh, NSI, electric piano, which I really love this piano. Um, but it's more geared for the electric piano, like a Fender Rose sound, if that's what you're going for. Uh, double click on that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so what happens on this particular instrument is uh, you have pretty much some of the same features that you have on the other ones. You have your different patches you can change here. Uh, let's go for like a classic world Wurlitzer sound. All right, I can turn on triple O. I can just a rate on it, make it slower. Adjust the depth. Okay, how much how much you want on it? I'm gonna add chorus. Okay, which gives it more of a stereo effect. Um, I can add drive on it. Okay. It gives it a little bit more flair, a little bit more distortion. If you want like a synthesizer. So, um, tone, uh, tune, I can change the tone, I can change the tone, if I want a darker sound, if I want a brighter sound, that's fine, keep it back in the center, I can pan it, I can turn the volume up, um, now because the bass has so much drive in it, because of the natural tendencies of that sound, I'm going to keep this more, um, more mellow, and let's do... Keep the chorus in there just a little bit. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's see what I'm gonna do. I might do something that clashes with the bass line. Sometimes I like doing stuff that's like out of the ordinary, so. I go with the key. Let's see. I could do something else. I'm saying. Okay. So, so I'm basically building around uh, F major, but I'm just changing the quality of it. So if I'm major nine, I might want to do augmented, um, but I don't know. Let me just record something. This might not make sense, you all, because uh, right now that's in the mindset that I'm in. Things are not supposed to make sense. All right, let's try this. I like it. It's different. I'm going to keep it for the sake of this tutorial anyway. Uh, so I'm going to quantize that. like it you all i'm gonna press control s and let's see i've used all three so hopefully this gives you a cool way a cool way to understand the concept of using 
the instruments, um, they're really good. I wish they had a, a studio instrument guitar pack, but they unfortunately don't have one on here. Uh, they never had one, even with Sonar, uh, when it was, you know, popping. But these instruments will get you a long way. And then, I mean, for the most part, I've, I've used these quite a bit. Uh, I do use other different samples and things like that, like Splice. I have a Splice membership, so I use stuff from that. Uh, but you can get in here and get some really good sounds uh, with just these three packs, especially if you add effects, you add EQ, compression, and things like that. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with how to mix in Cakewalk, well, then you definitely want to check out the next video that comes after this.